watchers welcome back to the channel today i have yep another spinnaker watch here so here is the typical uh, blue case right spinnaker watches right there uh, let's just open it and show you what we have here so that's the watch on the cushion there you know again microfiber cloth a bit of an influencer guide and then a typical tag in this case i also have left the spare links in there so it is a bracelet watch and you do remove some links to size it unless you have a massive wrist which i do not uh, so let's just open this up and show you this piece so guys here we have the latest spinnaker flus on bracelet so there was a previous model of the flus uh, now this watch is named after henry flus which is inventor uh, of scuba modern scuba diving equipment uh, whatever you know it, it's probably got very little to do with the namesake uh, but that's the where the name comes from flus uh, the previous msrp of the flus on uh, the leather strap was 285 usd this one they will be asking for 350 usd because it is not a leather strap it is actually a stainless steel bracelet but of course any discount codes and links to products i will put down in the description if you're interested to check it out uh, the sign up should be active right now for this product and uh, the purchase date will be sometime in the near future Okay, so that's the introduction to the watch. Let's uh, talk about the movement in here. So guys, uh, the movement in here is again, none other than the Seiko NH35A uh, stats down the left side of the screen there. Uh, in this case, you know, the rated accuracy, as you can see there on the left, uh, uh, the, the regulation that they have been doing on your watches is getting better and better, I think. And in use, I am getting plus four seconds per day a really excellent accuracy that i'm running out of this in the last four or five days that i have been using it uh, so this movement does have a quick set date uh, that you can see implemented on the three o'clock position there uh, black disc with white writing so that's kind of nice that it is actually a black disc rather than a white uh, disc okay enough about the movement let's go on into the case now the case here uh, as with the original flus is a 43 millimeter diameter so across uh, the case as well as the bezel exactly the same 43 millimeters 316 l steel uh, the thickness is a pleasing 13 millimeters so it's pretty good in terms of not being very thick uh, lug width as you might expect is 22 millimeters for this watch and the lug to lug distance which uh, you know it's kind of commensurate with the uh, diameter is actually 51 millimeters between my thumbs there overall weight uh, the previous flus on uh, the leather strap was a hundred gram round weight this one is substantially heavier of course it is actually 166 grams on the scale so this thing does add more than 60 grams to the weight which is kind of what you expect with a substantial metal bracelet uh, like this one that they have provided here okay so finishing wise the bezel, a uh, little bit hard to see, I guess, but it is actually polished finishing on the bezel there. That transitions uh, to uh, longitudinal brushing on the tops of the lugs as well as uh, the sides, a longitudinal brushing. And then as per previous, there is a polished bevel there. So pretty nice that they have implemented a polished bevel, that transitioning work there. So again, Spinnaker, one, you know, they really do pretty decent cases uh, for the price that they're asking here. You know, they're, they're really quite solid and very, uh, really nicely polished and finished uh, the way they do it. From the, the brushing on the side, it does transition on to a circular uh, brushing uh, on the case back, all right, the bottom of the lug surface. The, the actual case back itself is uh, polished uh, that you can see there. So, you know, that typical screw in polished display case back for spinnaker watches with that kind of slight decoration uh, on the rotor that you can see there uh, coupled with a screw in kind of etched crown right there's a bit of a laser etching there for the spinnaker logo uh, on the the crown there the water rating on this watch is actually 150 meters and you can see that on the dial printed there uh, above the six o'clock position Moving on to the, the dial then, so let's just focus in on the dial here. So what we have here is a brown textured dial and they, they call this tropical brown and I think that kind of is alluding to tropical dial watches, you know, kind of old uh, watches that kind of fade and have a patina over time. They've, they've kind of gone for that, but this is of, of course a, a sandpaper texture. It does come in black, 
and blue as well as a white finish. I've chosen to go with the brown because it stood out to me in the photos as something quite different. I don't think I have had many brown dial watches at, at all. Uh, it does have a printed chapter ring around the circumference there with uh, kind of small subdivisions that you can see as well as printed words. Uh, the Spinnaker logo as usual is thick printed. I don't think that's actually an applied uh, logo. It's thick printed. Uh, but does have applied hour indices as well as numerals at the 6, 9 and 12 position. The, the 3 o'clock position of course is kind of cut out by that uh, date window. The hands, the hands are brushed uh, batons, kind of simple baton hands uh, with a patina loom. So that, that patina super luminova is uh, applied on all the indices as well as the hands as well as the second pip and it also also applied uh, in that bezel. It's a kind of a full loom around the bezel but not a, a, a thick application. It's actually a fairly light application on the bezel there. Loom shot uh, I'll put right here for you to see. It's got loom uh, on all the typical places uh, apart from the bezel which is actually loomed all the way around but does not glow too brightly it does not last through the night uh, but you know the hands do last pretty well okay on top of that uh, is a 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel with a, an overlay which is acrylic so that's interesting you know that, that, that this, this fluce is uh, kind of had this feature about the acrylic overlay and that's something I haven't seen in any other watch uh, just let you see the bezel okay pretty nicely functioning minimal play pretty tight so pretty well done bezel I gotta say in this model that they've done here okay so that's here's how it is let's just get it back to the 12 o'clock uh, position there all right on top of the the bezel and the dial is a flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating pretty nicely done uh, uh, anti-reflection I must say they seem to be improving as they go along in terms of the the quality of the anti-reflective coating all right guys so that's the case let's move on to the bracelet now which is uh, completely brushed on the H link as well as the intermittent link here uh, it does also have brushing on the side you know sometimes you see uh, polish on the side in this case it doesn't it's actually also uh, brush finishing on the side uh, there are solid end links okay let's just show you that uh, and push pin adjustment of course no spinnaker I've ever seen has anything except push pin there hasn't been ever any uh, screw link adjustments on a spinnaker uh, the bracelet uh, class as you can see uh, as you might expect is pressed metal uh, with this keeper which is also pressed metal as well as a dive extension uh, right pretty basic uh, the deployant arms however you know are pretty solid that's the most solid part of the class uh, ironically all right uh, one thing I would criticize about this micro adjustment uh, so just show you there there's three holes there but realistically it's only useful in two positions so I've got it on the outer position in the middle position it works but if you put it on the inner position it kind of like rides over that part there uh, and prevents you from closing the clasp so it looks like there's three holes but really there's only two holes which are functional which is kind of annoying because I, I could do with two millimeters looser but if I do that if I put in another link here uh, I can't actually put it on the inner hole which means that I have to go four millimeters looser and that's a little bit too loose so I'm going to have to put up with this being just a very smidgen uh, too tight here all right so that's the description of the watch uh, now let's just put it on uh, snap it on the wrist there for the wrist shot and so there we go the new Spinnaker Fluce bracelet uh, remember it's 43 millimeters with 51 millimeter lug height on my 17 centimeter wrist it is on the large side but I think it kind of kind of just uh, fits you know and I've certainly enjoyed having this watch and, and you know 13 millimeters not too thick it actually looks pretty good actually I've really enjoyed having this and using this in the last few days okay so that's the description guys what have I particularly enjoyed about this watch uh, you know, I think it's a usual as usual it's a pretty well done spinnaker particularly the case quality the finishing is you know not bad at all and in this case it's a rather striking vintage textured dial with that patina loom which which I, I think adds to it you know if they left this at white loom it would be different with this patina it, it really does pop to some extent uh, you know you're getting sapphire with uh, you know reliable Seiko workhorse movement for the price and in this case it comes you know more expensive but it comes with a pretty darn good H-Link style bracelet 
Uh, and I, I think it kind of hits the sweet spot in some aspects. You know, one is the thickness, right? 13 millimeters for a good quality uh, case, you know, dive style watch is pretty darn good. You know, you, I think spinnakers don't make uh, any thinner than this, and this is as good as it gets. And 13 millimeters, I, I quite like. You know, you you don't expect a lot thinner for a dive watch. And the other thing is, at 166 grams, it, it kind of hits this nice spot for me where. It, you know, it's it's getting to a point where more and more weight feels more and more substantial. But beyond about 165 grams, I find that it probably gets too heavy. So this is about the sweet spot for feeling substantial in terms of the you know the heft that it has on the wrist. That's just my own personal view of this. Now the things I, I will point out about uh, uh, things to note about this thing if you're considering buying, right? It doesn't have ceramic uh, and the proud acrylic, right? That, that acrylic being you know, the first thing you hit might be of concern because the acrylic is very easy to scratch. So that's something to note of this uh, bezel insert here. Uh, the bezel loom, as I mentioned, is relatively weak. So that, that's not particularly functional. But if you just want to t tell the time, yes, the hands do function for quite a long time. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I've pointed out already is that the that third micro adjust position isn't really there. That That's really non-functional. It's really only got two. And if you happen to be caught between positions and links, it, you might find it either too loose or too tight, uh, just like I do. So guys, there you go. That's my review of this latest spinnaker, the spinnaker fluce on the bracelet, model number SP5055. Uh, let me know what you think about this watch, guys, uh, or any other spinnakers uh, in general that you have had. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.